What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, as always, talking about what I did today on the 5th of June in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching over these next couple of days, and actually a person on Discord messaged me a couple of stocks. I'm going to be giving my thoughts and opinion uh, opinions on those as well, as well as going into what I personally think right now about the market. As you guys saw in the title of today's video, is the market running on false hope right now? We're going to be talking about that in today's video. But before we do get into all of these different topics, all I ask from you guys out there watching is if you enjoy these videos, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And I do appreciate every single one of you guys out there. The community we are building is absolutely amazing. So let's just hop right into the topic of today's video, starting off here with the S&P 500 the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies on the stock market ended up having a very nice day today, up 22 points at the close, up 0.82% on the dot here. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 0.82% at the close, up 207 points. And the NASDAQ had a very strong day today as well, up 0.7% right now, up 51 points. Points. So the market continued the rally from yesterday. Pretty, pretty strong today. And let's just go over to the S&P. Let's break down some technicals. And we're going to notice that these three indexes, they're actually all at a similar point of resistance right now, which is kind of interesting. So let's get into that right now. So the S&P 500, again, we had a 22-point day. But notice how we're trending under that 50 simple moving average at the close of today's market. Notice how this is a spot where a couple of weeks ago, last time we had that run, we actually got rid rejected at that 50 simple moving average resistance. Notice we did something very similar. We sold off for a period of a couple of days. We had a couple of days of rebound. Then we got rejected by the 50 SMA at a lower high. Notice how we just did the same thing, right? We noticed how, you know, we sold off for a couple of days. Now we've been recovering for a couple of days. So what I'm thinking right now is this could be a kind of a spot in the technicals where it's going to tell us a lot of different things. It's going to tell us if we break out of this level, that can be a bullish move. We can be reversing to the upside from there. That could be a huge sign for the upside, right? But it's also telling me if we slowly get rejected here, let's say we notice futures are down in the pre-market session tomorrow, that's telling me that this downwards trending uh, pattern that is still intact, by the way, guys, that could be continuing, especially if we slowly start to break back into this $2,700 level. B because at that point, you know, we're clearly at $2,825 right now. We've gotten quite a bit, uh, quite a bit above that $2,800 level of support but if we started to break back into that level of support and back into the 2900 level that's a pretty strong confirmation in my eyes that we did get rejected by that 50 simple moving average so you know on the 184 hour chart guys the the S&P it's clearly still downtrending and this is a very critical spot. So keep an eye on that. Also, the RSI is creeping up to the overbought status. Is this a point of rejection? I'm very excited to find out. So going over to the 20-day, one hour, we're kind of um, a bit higher on these charts today, obviously, than we were in yesterday's session, but we are still trending under that 180 simple moving average resistance. We talked about in yesterday's video how we broke the 50 SMA here on the 20-day, one hour, but we we were still downtrending because we were still trending below the 180 SMA. The same thing stands today. And if we were to break out of this tomorrow, let's say over these next couple of days, that's a very big bullish move. But if we got rejected here, slowly started to fall back down. And especially if we broke 2800, like I said a couple of minutes ago, that's going to be a huge sign that we are potentially continuing this downtrend. So that's kind of what I'm watching here, guys. You know, the five day, five minutes showing a huge reversal here but like I mentioned in every single video it's very important to take a look at all of the different time frames so you're understanding 
maybe it's not reversing, um, you know, fully, right? Maybe it's not reversing if on the 20-day and on the 30-day charts, on the 90-day charts, it's not out of moving averages quite yet in terms of resistance levels, right? So keep an eye on that. Be mindful of continuing to look at multiple time frames. It will help you out. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, it's looking pretty similar at, uh, in terms of technicals as the S&P. Like I pointed out in the beginning of this video, the markets are all at a similar point of resistance. Just like the S&P, the Dow Jones right here is also at the 50 SMA resistance at, or rather on the 184-hour chart. We're also at another level of resistance, which happens to be an old support at around 25,500. So those are two separate levels of resistances we are at right now. So tomorrow is going to tell us a lot about the Dow. Are we breaking out to the upside here above moving averages or are we going to get rejected here and slowly start to push down which is going to confirm to me the continuation of the downtrend here. Going over to the 20 day 1 hour chart very similar to the S&P we're trending between the 50 and the 180 SMAs right now kind of hovering in between and we are right under the 180 SMA here on the Dow Jones. So tomorrow Tomorrow, very self-explanatory here, like I mentioned for the S&P. If we break the 180 SMA, that's a huge sign that we could be bullish from there. If we end up getting rejected, let's say the futures are down, we could be heading down here on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And I can't hammer it in enough, guys. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh my God, we've had two, three green days now. The downtrend is over. But it's not, right? It's not, it's, it's almost over. You know, technically speaking, if we do break out here, I guess you guys can say that is a break of the downtrend but as of right now you know we are still in the downtrend we are still in the downtrend so the nasdaq here just like the other two is trending under the 50 sma um resistance here we're also at a point of resistance that we were uh at in the beginning of march right at about 7200 7250 dollars that's a critical level for the NASDAQ. Let's say we start to trend up into the $7,300 level. At that point, we'll be breaking that resistance as well as the 50 SMA resistance. And that's a pretty good sign there for the upswing on the NASDAQ. So the 20-day, one-hour chart, it's kind of showing, you know, a bit of support here on the 180 SMA. We're actually breaking out of it as opposed to the S&P and the Dow on the 20-day, one-hour chart. And this is a pretty good sign right now for a potential reversal on the NASDAQ. But again, on the 184-hour, we're still trending below that 180 SMA. So I'd keep an eye and be careful at, you know, at these levels for the NASDAQ. But it is looking like it's uh, showing some support, some consolidation on top of that uh, 180 SMA. That's a pretty good starting sign, but we are just not quite there yet for a full confirmation that we are shooting back up for the NASDAQ. So like you guys read in the title of today's video, you know, I feel like the market right now is kind of running on false hope, right? We noticed how over the past and really for the beginning of 2019 and for this whole entire year up until a couple of weeks ago, the market was kind of running on false hope from kind of being uh, fed from Donald Trump on Twitter and the media regarding the trade war. Remember how, you know, Trump was saying the trade war was doing so well, negotiations were doing great, and in reality, they weren't doing so well, they weren't going to come to an agreement, and I feel like he was just saying that to kind of pump up the markets, to pump optimism into, you know, retail investors and the whole population out there that's looking to put money into the stock market, and I feel like something similar is happening right now with this Fed cut. We noticed how yesterday, um, which is really the catalyst that caused the market to go crazy yesterday. The catalyst was a potential Fed, uh, the interest rate cut. We notice how when the, the rates go up, that kind of has a negative pressure on the stock market. You know, people are less willing to borrow. It doesn't really stimulate the economy as much as a rate cut does. And what a rate cut does, it pumps more optimism into the stock market. It stimulates demand a bit more or the economy a bit more rather because people are more willing to borrow and things will do better in the short term um, in terms of the economy if that does end up happening, thus uh, increasing increasing and really the, having the stock market do very well as a result of that. So at this point, you know, 
we haven't even gotten a confirmation that a Fed rate cut is happening, which is why at this point it's kind of like false hope because we don't even know if it's going to happen, right? Who knows if the federal chair, uh, the, uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, is he actually going to do this? Because he did say he's open to it, but is he actually going to do this? <clears throat> I don't know, guys. And that that kind of worries me because this market could be trapping people, um, trapping people, trapping bulls that are hopefully thinking now that, oh my God, Fed cut, that's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, right? It may be trapping them uh, you know, right before we start to sell off again because there wasn't really any um, uh, solidification that we are 100% going to get a rate cut, right? So be careful, guys. You know, don't get trapped. This very well could be a bull trap that's just going on for a couple of days here, a couple of green days on some false optimism that might not even happen, right? At this point, you know, it's it's just still up in the air. So be careful, uh, you know, be very careful. That's all I can say, guys, at this point um, regarding that. I'm personally still not 100% convinced whatsoever that we are going to the upside here. I still think, you know, over the next couple of weeks, the overall trend of the market is going to be down. But again, do your own research. I personally think there's just a lot of negative pressure right now. Despite this sudden optimism, I'm just not buying it, guys. Uh, that's just me personally. I would love to know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section. And let's talk about very quickly what I did today in terms of trading. I actually caught SQQQ this morning as the market, the specific NASDAQ, was selling off a bit. There was a brief moment this morning, actually, where the NASDAQ was red. It was down about 30 points, and it caused the uh, SQQQ ETF here, which is a leveraged ETF that moves up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. It caused a big spike in this, and although I did catch it quite a bit late, I did not get in down here at the 4240 level, I got in at the 4340 level, roughly at about 1030 a.m. At this point, if you guys can see 1030 a.m., it's pretty late to the party, right? But I noticed how aggressive um, SQQQ was moving, and slash NQ at 1030 a.m., if we can see where it was, it was uh, selling off pretty aggressively, starting at about 945, 10 a.m., and then at 10 a.m., it started to sell off even more aggressively, and I figured I'll take a trade in SQQQ at that point. I was looking at it very closely. I was ready to cut my losses or uh, just stop out of it, you know, if it were to maybe sell off. But I was able to grab a quick little 0.5% out of it because I was able to get in at a point in time where it was still running up pretty aggressively. But I didn't grab as much as my goal was, usually my goal is about 1.5%, 1, 1 but we can see, you know, I got in at 43.40 roughly, and I was holding it all the way through this first pullback into the second peak, which was about a 1% trade there, but then once we started to sell off aggressively, and especially when we broke this old resistance, new support at around 43.66. I figured to take my profits there, play it safe at about a 0.55, 0.6% profit. So that was a very quick in and out trade on SQQQ. Um, and from there, the markets soared up. You guys saw NASDAQ was up like 0.7, 0.8%, which ended up closing SQQQ in the red, down nearly a dollar, down 2.28% at the close. So that's what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading, guys. Not Again, not a crazy day. There honestly hasn't been much movement um, in my accounts over these past couple of days. Mostly just been in and out and spectating the market because... I, I personally think um, the market is just setting up and trapping some bulls right now, and it's looking to potentially reverse here in the next couple of days to the downside. That's what I'm personally thinking right now, and I'm just gearing up my cash, getting ready for maybe another SQQQ play where the profits may be way bigger if we do see a big dump on the market. You know, SQQQ can fly up 6%. You know, SPXS, which has been getting beaten down, this can fly up five, six, seven percent, you know, if the markets do end up um, selling off. And I'm just waiting for that, guys, right now. These are both looking pretty juicy. You know, our sides are oversold. Both are at nice dip buys from their peaks a couple of days ago. I'm just waiting for the reversal right now. My uh, spidey senses, my gut 
is telling me that it's coming, and I'm just going to be waiting for that. So those are two, might as well start off the uh, what I'm watching uh, part of the video right now. Those are two that I'm watching, SPXS, SQQQ, SPXS in particular trades on the S&P 500. It goes up when the S&P is going down, and like we said before, SQQQ goes up on uh, whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. So those are the correlations for the ETFs. And I also had, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, a subscriber actually messaged me on Discord to talk about two stocks. Let's do that right now. I believe one of them was Berkshire Hathaway, BRK slash B. And this one it's looking pretty decent right now. Pretty good, actually, for a reversal. We're noticing how um, down or it went down from 218 down to about 197. It seems like if I just get my uh, uh, resistance support tool right here, seems like it ended up hold, holding a strong level of support at around 197, 198, which is good. We're trending up over the past couple of days. My guess is that the markets have obviously been bouncing back. A lot of stocks have been bouncing back. That is why Berkshire has pretty much just been following that, which kind of makes me a bit worried because if my theory plays out here that the markets are going to continue their sell-off over these next couple of days, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the next day, but at some point, you know, this can be a trap as well where it seems like it's been following the markets down, now following the markets back up. Maybe it'll trap us here if the markets sell off and we might be pushing back down on it. That is something that's a bit risky here, which in my opinion... You know, I'm probably going to be staying away from it because, again, I don't want to get in this bull trap. But let's just say the markets do reverse and BRK, B follows the markets. You know, what I'm going to be looking uh, at that point is let's say we break above this 203, 204 level of resistance, which is strong and coming up. You know, we could be moving back up from 204 up to the next spot, which is going to be roughly 207. So at this point, you know, the RSI is overbought. That's a bit concerning as well. But a good thing is over the past couple of trading days, again, the markets have been recovering, which in my opinion influences this, this price a lot. But we broke above that 50 simple moving average resistance. That's a good bullish sign on BRKB uh, here. And what I would like to see ideally before entry, if I do enter this, again, I don't think I'm I don't think I'm personally going to at this point because I like focusing more on my strategy with the ETFs. But what I what I would like to see is a pullback, a retest on that 50 SMA support, maybe at about 200, maybe at about 202, and from there that'll bring the RSI down a bit. That could be a better entry up to the resistance at about 204, and if we broke 204, that could be a spot to add more money into it if you're swing trading right and from there you can hold it up to 207 if it does end up going to the top of that channel and from there if we're going to the uh drawing tool very quickly the trend line tool you can see it's about a two percent margin of profit from where it is right now let's say you got in at 202 that's about a 2.65 percent margin of profit up to $207. So that's kind of the breakdown right now on BRKB. A bit nervous that it's just simply following the trend of the market, and if the market dumps, it'll follow it back down. But I still figured I'd break it down because a Discord member, again, messaged me about this, and I do like breaking down stocks that you guys shout out. And please, feel free to DM me any stocks, and I'll talk about them in this video. So another one was CAT. Ticker symbol CAT, kind of in a similar situation to Berkshire here. It's been following the markets down. You know industrials get hit pretty hard when we're in a trade war. Tariffs, those hit industrials very heavily, and you can see how hard it got hit back in October. And now, you know, like I said, just like BRKB, we're trending above the 50 SMA here on the 184-hour chart. That's a pretty good sign of a reversal. We're looking to hold that level as a new support, but we're not fully doing that quite yet. Actually, we are, but we're not fully confirming the bounce off of the support level, which is what I would like to see before entering here. But again, I'm not too convinced on CAT fully reversing here if the markets and the trade war tensions continue 
to impact the market, which I personally think they will. I think CAT is just going to continue to fall, unfortunately, because like we said, industrials, you know, just take a look at some of the other companies, guys, you know, Boeing, you know, CAT, uh, a bunch of these, they just get hit hard um, during times like this, especially with the China trade war. So I'd be careful with CAT, but we are looking to break back into a zone here between 122, which is a support. We are noticing that we're holding right now, right, since we are above uh, 122 or at 123 right now. And you guys, you know, if we hold this level, we slowly start to trend back up. I'd wait for uh, a potential uh, resistance at about $128, which is this next one that I'm seeing here. So it's looking pretty good, right? We, we just need to see a pop and a just a, a, a confirmation of the bounce on the 50 SMA to the upside here. There could be some potential. So some other ones that I'm watching here uh, heading into tomorrow, guys. You know, we're seeing Coca-Cola here ended up filling that gap from 49 to 50. Now we're all the way up to 51 looking to pull back. So if this one's pulling back from 51 down to about 50, ideally, that could be a nice pullback entry on Coca-Cola as it potentially, you know, holds this resistance as a new support and slowly starts to pop back up to $51. This can be a nice dip buy, but we need to see it pull back first. KO. I'm watching that one very closely. Notice how J and J is at a 50 SMA resistance right now. This could be a nice play if it does end up breaking out of that resistance. From there, we could be heading back up to 137, which is right under that 180 SMA. Uh, you know, pretty much a trade between the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA, right in between the moving averages. That could be a nice play there. Two percent on J and J margin of profit. We saw Disney today, guys. This one spiked up very, very big right here. We're noticing it's kind of breaking down or breaking out of this little uh, downwards channel that it's kind of been in over these past couple of trading days. So this could be a pretty bullish move on Disney. Keep an eye on it. Maybe it's going back up to the 140 level. Who knows? This looks pretty bullish though in my eyes right now. Another one that did very well today was Cron, guys. The return of the marijuana stock Cron. We haven't talked about this in a very long time. This one's actually right at a critical spot. I think if we break this 180 SMA on a technical basis, that could be a huge bullish move on Cron. You guys can see it's up 10% today. I'm watching this one for a potential rally from here. So those are just a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Check out one of these other videos if you guys want or just bored and you want to just learn more about the stock market, whatever. Go watch one of these videos. I guarantee you guys will find a ton of value in them. I appreciate every single one of you out there that watched this video to the end to the middle of the video if you're new i appreciate you sticking through you guys are awesome so i'll catch you all in the next video have a good one peace out